Nellie Mae Has Her Say by Cynthia DeFleiss. This is a 3.3 AR reading level story. And it's very clever. Nellie Mae Nimble lived in a tiny cottage in the bottoms with her parents, six younger brothers, and six younger sisters. There was never enough food to feed so many hungry mouths. I am old enough to earn my board and keep, Nellie Mae told her parents, and I have heard that Lord Ignatius Pinkwinkle needs a new housekeeper and cook. So the next morning, Nellie Mae packed a bag with her few belongings, climbed the steep hill to the home of Lord Ignatius Pinkwinkle, and knocked on his door. I thought you might wish to hire me, said Nellie Mae. I am a grand cook and neat as a pin. If you work for me, said Lord Pinkwinkle, there are a few things you're going to have to learn. I'm good at learning things, sir, Nellie Mae assured him. Come inside then. I have special names for things, and I expect you to use them whenever you speak to me. Certainly, sir, said Nellie Mae. First and foremost, you are not to call me sir. You are to address me as most excellent of all masters. Most excellent of all masters, repeated Nellie Mae. That's a fancy title to be sure. Be certain to use it, said Lord Pinkwinkle. Now let us tour the premises. We'll begin upstairs. Here in my chamber, what is this? That's simple, said Nellie Mae proudly. It is your bed. It is your bed, and it is, I assume, I will be making it up for you. Not at all, said Lord Pinkwinkle. That is not a bed. It is my restful, restful slumberific. Your restful slumberific, asked Nellie Mae doubtfully. I never heard of such as that. Well, now you have, said Lord Pinkwinkle. Next, tell me what do you see here? Why, said Nellie Mae, I see your dirty trouser, trousers, which I suppose I'll be washing and pressing. No, no, no. These are my long-legged Jimber Johns. Long-legged Jimber Johns, are they? said Nellie Mae. My, my, you could have fooled me. And these, asked Lord Pinkwinkle. Those are your boots, if I may say so. You may not, and these are not boots. They are my stompin' watchers. Stompin' whackers, indeed, mumbled Nellie Mae. Now to the parlor, said Lord Pinkwinkle. What, pray tell, have we here? A fire burning in the fireplace? Nellie Mae asked, hopefully. Of course not. It is a flaming pop and sizzle. A flaming pop and sizzle. Whatever was I thinking, said Nellie Mae. And what is this creature that has been following us around? That's nothing but a mangy old hound dog. Certainly not. He is my fur-faced fluffenbarker. Nellie Mae sighed. Your fur-faced fluffenbarker? Why didn't I guess that? Oh, and this thing on the end of the fur face fluff and barker, that goes back and forth and back and forth. For mercy's sake, it's his tail. Not at all. It's his wigger wagger. His wigger wagger, if you say so. I do, said Lord Pink and Winkle. Next, in the kitchen. Do you know what this is? Well, most folks would call it a bucket or maybe a pail, ventured Nellie Mae, but there is no telling what you'll be calling it. I call it a wet scooperooty, and so must you. If I must, said Nellie Mae. And inside, what is this? Crimey, look what you've done. You've poured water all over the floor. It's not water, but river trickle, silly girl. It needs mopping up, no matter what you call it, grumbled Nellie Mae. You can do that in a moment. Now let's go outside, shall we? Tell me, what is the name for this entire magnificent edifice? I would call it your house, but I'll lay odds that that's not the right answer, muttered Nellie Mae. 
indeed it is not. This is my rooftopped castellorium. Rooftopped castellorium. Whatever you say. I say it's high time you get to work, but let's not forget my special name for you. For me? Why, I thought I was your housekeeper and cook. No, no, that will never do. From here on, you will be my fuzzy dust and fooder. To that, all Nellie could say was, hump. That afternoon, as she mopped the floor, cleaned the stairs, and cooked the supper, Nellie Mae wondered what she had gotten herself into. But she was a good, smart girl, and she needed a job, so she practiced Lord Pinkwinkle's special names over and over until she knew them by heart. And it's a good thing that she did, because that very night she was awakened from a sound sleep. She sniffed the air, then leapt from her bed and ran to the parlor where something was terribly wrong. She dashed up the stairs to Lord Pinkwinkle's chamber, banging on the door and shouted, Most excellent of all masters, get out of your restful slumberific and put on your long-legged limber johns and your stomp watchers and a spark of flaming pop and sizzle got on the fur face fluff and barker's wiggle wagger and if you don't get a wet super rooty full of river trickle quickly you'll lose your roof trop rooftop castellorium and everything in it and one more thing most excellent of all masters get yourself a new fuzzy duster and fooder because i quit Nellie Mae went out to the door, down the hill, and back to the bottoms where she curled up in bed with her six little sisters. The next morning, to her great surprise, who should come knocking but to the door but Lord Ignatius Pinkwinkle himself. Good day to you, Miss Nellie Mae, he said. You saved my house and my dog, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. What's more, I like you. You're clever and quick. Might you be willing to return to as my housekeeper and cook? I might, said Nellie Mae. But if I do, must I use your special names? Just one, said Lord Pinkwinkle. And what is that? asked Nellie Mae. Well, my dear old nursery, nursey used to call me Pinky, Lord Pinkwinkle said. Nellie Mae smiled. It would be my pleasure to work for you, Pinky. The end. <laughs>